Martin Kiefer was born on the 23rd of March in the village of Popki of Ruza County of Moscow province to a peasant's family of Peter Konstantinovich and Marfa Sazonovna Zaitsev. Finishing a village school, Nikifor wanted to be an educated person from his childhood and was rather intelligent. As he was hardworking, he had a good household that during the Soviet period became the reason of many hardships. During the First World War, Nikifor Petrovich was mobilized to the army, but as he was middle-aged, he was appointed to serve on unit transport. Returning home, Nikifor Petrovich continued to run peasants' household. As a faithful man and permanent parishioner of the Church of the Resurrection of Christ in the village of Ivoilova, he was a member of the church council. He sang in choir, was a constant participant of cross processions and public prayers, summoning his fellow villagers to pray God and go to church without paying attention on persecutions. The people who knew Nikifor Petrovich said that he was a deeply faithful and helpful person who was against literary. During mass collectivization, despite being against the way it was held, Nikifor Petrovich finally entered the kolkhoz. He used to measure the work throughout a long peasant's day and didn't accept the demand when, in case of impossibility to complete something quickly, people began to work for show. Erstwhile, when the head of the village council began to hurry him and even showed how to reap wheat faster, Nikifor Petrovich, as an experienced and measured man, answered him sedately. You worked like that just now, while I have to work this way for the whole day, and I am not able to do it. In Kolkhoz he never began his work without prayer, and party authorities didn't like this. The persecutions of the year 1937 started, and again like in 1930, peasants began to be eliminated, and any reason for the arrest and conviction was used. Nikifor Petrovich was faithful, and that was enough for his arrest. On the 23rd of September 1937 he was arrested and imprisoned in the town of Volokolamsk. As witnesses, the head and the secretary of the village council as well as one of the collective farmers were questioned. They said that Nikifor Zaitsev, speaking about the execution of Tuhachevsky and others, said that they had been executed in vain. Look at that period, brothers shoot each other. When in the summer of 1937, during the meeting, people who hindered others from work on collective farms were being discussed, Zaitsev stood up and shouted, You rob in walking and try to prove something. Then he went away, banning the door. Zaitsev is against loans. Zaitsev is a religious mad who always takes care about the renovation of a church. While at home during religious holidays, he has public prayers and sings chants. During Easter religious holiday, he tried to persuade collective farmers to organize cross-procession with icons, telling them that under color of new constitution it is allowed to do it. This year, during the discussion of the topic of anti-religious propaganda, Zaitsev declared, the Holy Writ is the very truth, while the rest is the lie of Antichrist. Zaitsev sings in a church choir. In his house, Zaitsev has made an icon stand and every evening sings chants before the icons, singing so loudly that the whole street hears. During the collective work, Zaitsev showed himself as a loafer who seldom goes to work, and when he comes, he sings prayers most of the time. Zaitsev is a religious mad and a thirst solicitor on church issues. He tells collective farmers that it is needed to believe only in gospel, while the rest, including collective farms, is the deeds of Antichrist. Zaitsev never signs any state loans, declaring that he is against help to Antichrist. He calls state supplies a robbery. During the interrogation, the investigator questioned Nikifor Petrovich. According to the materials of the investigation case, you have a close contact with a clergyman who often visits you at your place. During these meetings, you discuss political issues. Give your testimony on this topic. 
The priest truly visits me at my place. He comes during religious holidays organizing a public prayer. After, I make tea for him. I had talks with the priest about harvesting, while I never had any political conversations with him. According to the materials of the investigation case, you are doing contra-revolutionary and anti-Soviet agitation among your fellow villagers. Give your testimony on this topic. I have never done any contra-revolutionary and anti-Soviet agitation. According to the materials of the investigation case, in June 1937, during the discussion of the government decree about the exemptions of collective farmers on wheat supplies, you spoke with flagitious contra-revolutionary slander on the party and government, claiming that this decree is a deception of collective farmers. Give your testimony on this topic. I did not say these words. People said this about me, as now in the Soviet Union the majority are slanders, and slander others for nothing. In my opinion such evil spread because there is no Christian faith, and the young generation is not taught with Christian moral values. According to the materials of the investigation case, you supported famous contra-revolutionary leaders in your conversations with the collective farmers. Give your testimony on this topic. In my firm belief, uh, these people were clever but did bad things, and instead of agitation of their own ideas they betrayed. If they had not betrayed, but defended their ideas, I would have welcomed them. I also do not agree that they were executed, as I consider it to be a cruel punishment. According to the materials on the investigation case, you agitate against collective farms, calling them antichrist deeds. Give your testimony on this topic. Collective farms uh, are good enough, but people are not ready for public works. That is why there is no consistency in work. As far back during the collectivization, I offered not to hurry with creating a coal hose, but firstly to create trial collective farms for people to show the advantages, and then to create collective farms in large numbers. According to the materials of the investigation case, you petitioned to allow the priest to go to people's houses with icons during Easter religious holiday and you persuaded collective farmers to do it. Give your testimony on this topic. The priest explained to me that now, according to the Constitution, we have rights to organize cross-processions with icons without any permission of local authorities. The priest went across the village with the gospel and the cross. He showed me a book and said, just in case I have the constitution with me in order when the members of the village council begin to carp with me, I will show them the column where it is allowed to perform these rites. Apart from you, who has the same opinion in your village? My wife Maria Ignatievna has the same opinion. A priest often visits me and we have conversations on the religious topics. I was the member of a church council and sang in a church choir. What are the subjects of your discussions with a priest? We talk only on religious issues. That was the end of the investigation, and Nikifor Petrovich was transferred to Taganka prison in Moscow. On the 11th of November 1937, the Inkvidi Troika sentenced him to eight years of imprisonment in a labor camp and he was sent to the station of Medvedje Gara in Belbaltlag. When the Second World War began, on the 28th of July 1941, Nikifor Petrovich was transferred to Kargupol Lag in Arhangelsk region. In the camp, he had to weave fishing nets. Nikifor Petrovich Zaitsev passed away on the 21st of May 1942 in Kargupol Lag and was buried in the unmarked grave. On the 26th of December 2006, by the decree of Holy Synod, 
Martin Akifar Zaitsev was canonized as a new martyr and confessor of Russia.